My name is Martin Frost. I am a 4-H painter, which means that I produce images, paintings on books in such a way as they can only appear when you fan the edge up. And when you release the edge, the gold only shows. Magic. If you're intrigued to know how I do this, I'll show you. Oh, by the way, this is a typical example of the sort of bindings I've been working on over the last 40 years. It's early Victorian, full leather, very pretty. Gilt edges, of course. It takes the gold to actually hide the painting. What I do is to fan them up, put them in the press, and this is a special press. Uh, it's a bit tatty looking because it's done for a half thousand forages. But the joy of it is the two bridges here pinch the pages and put no pressure on the boards. With these old books, they can be a bit tender. So I shall put the book into my press. These presses are available for sale. And this is the noisy part of it. Lightly pinching just the pages so that they are presenting themselves as a canvas to work on. You may see in these lights the gold is still there, but what I'm working on is paper. I also make a smaller workshop press, so a budget press, very useful. I sell them to my students and uh, they're also useful for institutes and libraries who are photographing their collections of forage paintings. Same principle, double bridge, puts no pressure on the binding. I won't paint this one, but I have another one that I have just started, and I shall put that one into this press and show you my technique. I've got a started painting here. It's on a 1900 book on tennis, nice book, which I put into a presentation binding. It's going to be a gift. The painting, the image they want, is a period image of tennis players back in the 20s, I would suspect. As you can see, I've pinched the pages between the bridges. The boards are still slack, so there's no pressure on the hinges. The colours I'm using are English watercolours. They're pan rather than tube. I prefer those. The medium, just water. Watercolour, it is watercolour painting, but it's a bit of a misnomer for forage painting because if you put a lot of water down, if you put down a wash, for example, it creates problems. The paint will dribble, will seep through each of the pages and mar the face of the leaf. We don't want that. Also, it'll have a tendency of cockling the paper. We don't want that. But almost, most importantly, really, it will loosen the gold. And we certainly don't want that because you need to be able to make the painting vanish. For this particular image, to make sure that the composition works, I've gridded the original up and transferred a grid onto the edge of the book in dirty water, not even paint. And then you can use the grid to establish where each of the key elements of the composition are. That saves problems by working from the left to the right and right-handed and you running out of space at the end. Doing a bit of time at the beginning to plan it does help. So, let's paint. The mount paint I use not a lot of paint there, but there's even less because I get rid of most of it on a waste sheet. And then it's a technique of very light tickling. And it is very, very time consuming. These books, these forage paintings are not cheap. They take a lot of time. They can't really be that cheap. So. You slowly build it up, try and avoid overpainting because you do that, you soften the paper, you soften the gold. And of course, with watercolour, it's not like oils 
and acrylics where you can put a white over the top or a lighter colour over the top. You can't do that, not with the watercolours. The lightest of the image is where it's not painted. Whenever you make a mark, it will never be lighter than that again. So it is, it's a fairly perverse way of making an image. But that's watercolour painting for you. I hasten to add, this is my technique. I'm speaking to other forage paintings, they do it different and they get good results. So um, I'm just teaching you what I know. It's very much a progressive process. Lay down a bit of paint, move along to a different area where it's dry, paint that and work your way along the, I call it a canvas, along the surface of the paper. When the first bit has become dry, you can go back and work it up again. It's all light tinting work. The more meticulous, the more effective the end result. So, you just progress the image now, layer by layer, slowly adding a little bit of paint over the top of the previous paint, once it's dried of course, until you've created an image that you're happy with. So, when you've worked up the image to your own satisfaction, you've taken it as far as you can, you take it out the press, don't want to leave it in there too long anyway, because the press will tend to hold the book in a position which it doesn't like to stay in. Get it out of the press, and then you need to wipe off the residue paint that's on the gold. There isn't usually much. But if you can get that off, you'll end up with a nice bright gilded edge. And the way I do that is to very lightly tickle it with a bit of cotton wool. It's more damp than wet. And then you carefully wipe off the extra. And I say carefully, because rub it too hard, you'll end up with the gold on there. has to be done sensitively. And then you end up with a nice, bright, shiny, flawless gilded edge. That's the target anyway. Uh, I do workshops on this, which gives you all the finer details of how to do it. Just to contact me, go to the details at the end of the uh, the end of the video, and there's lots of links there to my workshops, to me, and to other interesting aspects of forage painting too.